How's it going YouTube? This is Vic Almighty here, bringing you a brand new episode of Customs with Vic. What we're gonna be customizing today is a Tinker Hatfield Air Jordan 3, and what I'm gonna be turning it into is a brand new PE Tinker Oregon 3. That is such a beautiful shoe. If you guys are not familiar with the shoe, here's an image of it right here. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is replicate that colorway onto the shoe right here. It's a perfect base for it, but at the same time it's not, because pretty much the entire shoe is gonna have to be repainted from the elephant print to the uppers, the soles, the swooshes, even the tabs are gonna get replaced. That's gonna be my favorite part of this custom. I see a lot, a lot of work. It's probably gonna be one of the bigger customs that I've done. So guys, let's get started. The very first step we're gonna do is lay down a thin layer of bar cement onto the elephant print. What we're gonna do is lay down a nice little strip just around the stitching right here. That way, when we go in with the X-Acto knife to remove this tab, the stitching stays in place and we don't have to go back and replace the stitching. It'll save you a lot of time in the long run. All right, so we have the thin layer of glue laid down on the stitching. We're gonna let it cure for about five minutes. Then with the X-Acto knife, we're gonna go in and remove the tab. So that took a little strength to pull this tab out the shoe. On this bottom piece, it was glued down. So if you're doing this at home, be patient and have some strength in order to get this tab out the shoe. So we're not gonna apply the tabs just yet. We'll do that later on in the video. Right now, we're gonna focus on some prep work on the uppers and the midsoles. We're gonna be using acetone and cotton balls to do so. All right, so we have the uppers and the mitchells fully prepped. I know I said I was gonna do some taping next, but I got kind of carried away and started laying down the tabs on the back. It just made more sense to do so. The tabs I'm gonna be using are these perfect Oregon tabs that my boy Bill from b 2 Heat Restoration sent over. These tabs are great quality. My favorite part about them is the stitching. I hate doing stitching on tabs. It just takes way too long. He went ahead and did it. It looks perfectly almost factory. Thank you, Bill, much appreciated. So now we're gonna go ahead and finish applying the tabs. Already got one side down. We're gonna have to apply glue on the inside and this side um, to wrap it up. All right, so now that we got the glue applied, we're gonna let it cure for about seven minutes. Then we're gonna heat it up real quick and then clap it together. Got the tab down, looks good. This was a hard part. Probably the second hardest part on this custom. The next hardest part is gonna be the elephant print, but the tab looks good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is taping so we can lay down the green. Before we can lay down the green, we have to Cover up the gray with some white. That way when we lay down the green, it's nice and even all around. For the green, I used Jacquard Opaque Green, yellow, a little bit of white, and how, that's how I achieve this Oregon green color. It's not 100% accurate. I do not have the Oregon 3 right here next to me to color match it. I just went on Google, did my best to match it, and that's what I'm gonna go with. Green and solid guys, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which are the midsoles. For the midsoles, I'm gonna be changing this area right here and this area right here white. But before I can do that, I had to tape off the entire midsole, pretty much spray the entire thing white, go back and then apply the black once again. The reason why I'm spraying the whole thing white again is because if I just focus on this area right here and tape off around it and spray the white right here only, it will be two different shades of white and you'll be able to see the lines right taped off. So our best bet for a super clean job and to spray the entire thing white. Mm -hmm. 
White paint's laid down. I let it dry for about 30 minutes before I taped up the shoe. Now we're gonna go ahead and lay down the black on this area right here. Tape is off. Honestly, that was a little scary. I was afraid that the tape was gonna rip off the white paint on this area right here. Same thing with the green on the uppers. Luckily, that did not happen. Everything's good to go. What I planned for the next step to be was the elephant print. Originally, I was gonna go in, paint the entire thing a bone grayish color, like the exact same tone as the original elephant print, and then go back with the detail brush and do all the outlining on the elephant print all around the shoe. Unfortunately though, I'm not gonna do that. Two reasons why. It's gonna take hours and hours and hours, and I just don't think it's gonna come out that clean. I don't wanna spend hours and hours on doing the elephant print if it's not gonna come out crisp, because honestly, that's gonna ruin the rest of the custom. So we're just gonna leave it black. In my opinion, it looks pretty dope black. You know, it goes with the design. I know it's not how it's originally supposed to look, but it is what it is. It'll be an Oregon Tinker 2.0. So the next step's gonna be a sock liner. We're gonna be taping around the sock liner, same thing with the tongues, just a lot of taping. The only thing about painting the sock liner black is that we're gonna get rid of this Tinker Hatfield on the tongue, unfortunately. Nothing I could do about that, unfortunately, but it is what it is. So let's go ahead and tape. So we got the insides and the sock liner fully black. Looks good, it's starting to come together. Um, right now the tongue and the angle padding looks out of place. For the tongue, we have to widen out the jump man first with the airbrush. Once it's widened out, it doesn't have to be perfect. We'll go back in, apply the yellow, and then we'll lay down the gray on the rest of the tongue with a paintbrush. Gray is laid down, as you can see on the jump man, nice and crisp, no paint where there shouldn't be, except for the sock liner. I still gotta touch up the sock liner, but don't worry about that for now. We'll take care of that later. Um, the next step we're gonna do is paint these plastic lace pieces black. First, we gotta tape around it on both sides so we can airbrush it black. On to the next step, which is the ankle area, the swoosh, and the Nike letters on this side. For the Nike letters and the ankle area, we're gonna lay down some flat black paint from Angelus. For the swoosh, we're gonna tape around it and lay down the same yellow paint we laid down for the jump man. Uppers are 95% done. I did most of the touch-ups. Everything looks good. The swoosh is nice and sharp. The green is popping. The gray is perfect. The Nike letters looks good. Before I move on to the next step, I do want to mention I got my wisdom teeth out a few days ago. So if I'm talking a little weird, if I sound weird, um, that's thanks to my wisdom teeth being out. I'm a little swollen down here. A couple days ago, I had my face looking this freaking fast, so I couldn't film for a few days. Feeling a lot better, so let's go back and finish up this custom so I can go back to sleep and get back on my medications. So for the sole, we're gonna tape around this red pod and these red Nike letters. For the pod, we're gonna spray with the airbrush black. Then for the Nike letters, we're gonna lay down a light olive base coat with the paintbrush. 
that lay down the same green will lay down the uppers over that light olive base coat um, with that same green with the paintbrush. So it's good to go guys. Go ahead and check out the details. The black was super easy to lay down. The green took a little bit more time, but it was super easy. The paintbrush was no problem. Lay down an olive base coat and then lay down the green over it and it should be good to go. So now the next step is the important part. If the shoe's gonna be worn, the black and the green is gonna scrape off after the first couple of steps. I guarantee you that. You need to, it's a must, use a soul shield when it comes to painting soles. The soul shield protects the soles for the paint coming off. It'll make this custom wearable and it'll make it look clean. Um, if you don't use a soul shield, like I said, it'll literally just come right off. So for the soul shield, we're gonna pop this open. So for this custom, we're only gonna be using one soul shield film. We're gonna wanna place the glossy side on the bottom, the shoe on the matte side, grab a pen and simply trace around it. Then with some scissors, you're gonna wanna go in and just simply cut it. So next, we're gonna go ahead and peel it. So now you only get one shot at this, so you gotta make this count. So we have the soul shield in place, as you can see. Now using a heat gun, we're gonna wanna make sure to go over it a few times, and then with the towel, we're gonna go in, press it in through the grooves, and uh, make sure the soul shield's in place perfectly. You need a heat gun, don't use a blow dryer. The blow dryer is not gonna work as well as a heat gun. All right, so we have the soul shields in place. This step can be very tedious. Make sure to take your time, especially around the edges. P apply extra heat on the edges, make sure it's sealed. That way no dirt gets under and creates the soul shield to start peeling. Next step we're gonna do to give the soul shield some traction is apply our traction pads. You can cut these out to give them custom shapes. For this one, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go ahead and place it right here. One quick tip guys, when applying the traction pads, after you apply them onto the sole shields, heat them up, that way the traction pads adhere better to the sole shields and they don't come apart. Almost done guys. We did a lot of painting on the shoe. The uppers are painting, the sock liners painted, the midsoles are painted, um, a lot of painting. So in order to protect the shoe, we gotta go outside and spray with our Krylon matte finish. What this stuff does is protects from cracking, but that's about it. Um, our water and stain repellent protects it from a lot more stuff. It protects it from water, spills, dirt. We'll talk more about that later on in this video when I get to it. After we come back and spray with our Krylon matte finish, we're gonna come back, glossy up this O real quick, and then spray with some water and stain repellent and show it in action. Let's go. On to the last step before we spray it with our water and stain repellent. Using some Angelus high gloss finisher and a paintbrush, we're gonna carefully go around the O to glossy it up to, so it can really stand out on this matte black tab. The key to this is not to get any finisher anywhere but the O. If you get any of the finisher anywhere else, you'll be able to tell right away, so be very careful. All right, so this custom's good to go. Let's go ahead and go outside and spray some water and stain repellent. All 
All right, guys, that is going to bring us to an end on these custom Tinker Oregon Air Jordan 3 2.0s. This, this shoe was a lot of work, two, three days worth of work. Pretty much the entire shoe got painted. We'll start off with the sock liner. The entire sock liner got turned black. Originally, it was gray. Unfortunately, I couldn't salvage the Tinker Hatfield on the tongue, but that's okay. The ankle area got turned black. Originally, it was white. Same thing with the tongue and this area right here. Originally, it was white, got turned gray. Jumpman was red, turned yellow. Uppers got turned green. The swoosh turned yellow. The back tab got replaced. Thanks to my boy Bill from B2 Heat Restorations. His tabs are on point, check them out. I also did a lot of detail work, like the Nike over here on this side. Same thing with the soles. Redid the midsoles. Pretty much everything got touched on the shoe besides the elephant print and some areas on the rubber. That was a lot of work guys, but at the end, I'm pretty pleased on how these turned out. This custom is now fully wearable thanks to Rejuvenator products. With our sole shields, this shoe is able to be worn outside without the paint scraping off. And thanks to our water and stain repellent, if I was to spill anything on the shoe, it'll just bounce right off. So that's gonna wrap it up on this custom, guys. Let me know down below if you like this custom. Let me know if you think this is the best Oregon colorway so far. Also, today is Cyber Monday, so take advantage of our 40% off our entire website. Check out the description below for my promo code. This is Vic Almighty. See you guys next Monday.